Hi guys, I'm in a bit of a weird position today because I recently reached 15,000 subscribers. What? How did this happen? <laughs> Thank you so much. I am just in a tiny bit of shock. I never really expected to reach 15,000. I thought I would peak about 7,500. That was my ultimate goal and so to have doubled that and to have over doubled that is just ah I can't believe it thank you so so much I love you you you're my favorite so to say thank you I thought I would show my gratitude by doing a bookshelf tour it's my most requested video I think every single booktuber will say that everybody wants to see bookshelf tours this is the second part in my bookshelf tour series. You can go and watch my Penguin English Library tour to see the other video. And we'll just keep going with the bookshelf tours. This is my favorite part of my bedroom, my favorite part of all the books that I own. And so it features a lot of my favorite books. So we are gonna talk about them today. Let's do it. Let's get into the bookshelf tour. So the first section of my bookcase features my favorite book series of all time, which is the Stonewall series by Kit Berry. So I have three copies of the first book which is called Magus of Stoneworld. I absolutely adore them. I've talked about them quite a few times on my channel and a lot over on my blog. So I have two copies of the published version and then a copy of the self-published version and on the others I have two copies. So I have the self-published and the published version. So the second book is Moondance at Stoneworld. The third is Solstice at Stoneworld and then I also have a hardback version of the fourth book, Shadows at Stoneworld, a paperback copy, which you can see at the top, and two copies of the last book, Shaman at Stoneworld. I could talk about them all day long. I just love them with all my heart. And then as we travel up my bookshelf, you can see that I've got some YA books and then my Jane Austen vintage classics, which are possibly the best books that I own. They are so beautifully designed and I just think they look amazing on my bookshelf because the way that they are designed I can only fit one full book on each side so because these vintage classics are smaller it means I can fit them next to them and I love them. So in the middle I've got a postcard that says whatever our souls are made of his and mine are the same which is a quotation from Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte which you probably know is my favourite book and then I've got two little trinkets at the side. One is a deer and one is a hare. And if we take it down, you can see all my vintage classics on the right. So the first one is Pride and Prejudice. The second is Mansfield Park. The third is Emma. Then we have Sense and Sensibility, Persuasion and Northanger Abbey. I'm not sure which is my favorite cover from this, but I want to say Emma because I love the orange but I just love them all. I don't think I can choose a favourite. And then on the right, you can see some of my all-time favourite YA books, starting with Lauren James's. And the first one is The Loneliest Girl in the Universe, which is an amazing book that blew me away. It's kind of a psychological thriller in space. And it's about a girl called Romy who is on her own in space, on a spaceship headed for a planet, which she has the responsibility of because her parents are died and she is now left alone on the ship and it's a really interesting narrative because she is left alone so you don't really know what's going to happen and there are lots of twists and turns and it's just one of the best books ever and then we have the next together which is lauren's first book it's one of my all-time favorite books because it's just everything i look for in a book it's a reincarnation romance about two people called Catherine and matthew who are reincarnated again and again but they don't know their purpose and they have to piece together the story and why they are put on earth over and over again and then i have my collection of the three sarah barnard books and the first one at the top is her book which is coming out in February called Goodbye Perfect. I read it last month and absolutely loved it. I can't wait until it comes out next year and more people can read it. It's just so good about a girl whose best friend has run off with her teacher and Eden, the main character, has to really hold it together because her friend has gone wild and that is not like her. And then in the middle is my favourite Sarah Barnard book. It is A Quiet Kind of Thunder about a girl with anxiety and 
and a boy who is deaf and it's just the best romance ever but it's a lot more than a romance too which I really loved and then at the bottom is her first book Beautiful Broken Things. It's not my favourite Sarah Barnard book but it's one of my favourite books if that makes sense. And then right at the bottom we have my Alice Oseman books which are Radio Silence and Solitaire. I absolutely love these books and I just think they perfectly capture what it's like to be a teenager in the 21st century with internet and friendships and not really fitting in these books I would recommend every single day of my life because I think everybody should read them. And then right at the top we have my Bronte vintage classics, some YA and a classic too. So let's start with the Bronte classics and these editions are so beautiful. I think they perfectly capture what the Bronte books are about. For example, here is Wuthering Heights. Look at this gothic cover. I think it's the best. I've already said it's the best, but when it comes to the Brontes, that's pretty much all I can say. I feel like you need to read these books for yourself to find out how amazing they are. So the three books in that series are Wuthering Heights, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall and Jane Eyre. I would have loved it if they had made the rest of the Bronte books, but I think it was just one of those things where they made three of them. But as well as the Bronte and Jane Austen classics, there are also Virginia Woolf ones and Vintage have also released some Russian classics, but they are slightly bigger because they are big books. So they don't fit on my bookshelf as well as these ones do and I don't own them because I don't know when I'm gonna be able to fit in some Russian classics. And then on the other side, we have a mishmash of books and the first one is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. I think this is such an underrated book and I wish that more people would read it because it is so underrated. It's about a woman called Agnes Grey who is a governess because she has to support her family. It's got a really nice romance again. I feel like there's a running theme. I just love books with cute romances. I don't want the high stakes romance. I just like it where there are cute moments and hand holding and it's just so lovely. And Agnes Grey is definitely that kind of book. And then we have Marisi by Maria Tetshananoff. This is a book that I love so much and was really involved with when it was first published because I'm quoted on the inside of the hardback and on the front cover of the paperback. So it means a lot to me. And it's a brilliant Finnish feminist fantasy, which I think that you will love whatever age you are. And then more feminist books we have Only Ever Yours and Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. I love Louise O'Neill's books because they are so real. Only Ever Yours I would recommend for fans of The Handmaid's Tale. It's kind of a YA version but it doesn't really matter what age you are when you read it. It's definitely not one of those books that adults won't be able to relate to. And then Asking For It is a contemporary book about rape so trigger warning there. It's not the most easy thing to read. It's very difficult and you don't really like the character at all times, but I think that's what made it so good. And then the final three books here are Vendetta, Inferno and Mafiosa by Catherine Doyle. I absolutely adore this trilogy. It's one of my favourite trilogies because it's so easy to read. And as you read it, you feel like you're watching the film of the book. And it's one of those books I try and reread every now and again because I am obsessed with them. And I really wish that there were more books just because I can't get enough of the characters and this series. And then a bit of a weird and shaky camera angle for the top books because they're up very high and they're very highly stacked. I think that's a bit of a mistake on my part and I think they're gonna topple over at some point, but hopefully that won't happen. These are mostly contemporary, but I also have Six of Crows and Cookie Kingdom by Lee Bard Hugo because they are weirdly sized paperbacks and I love these books so much. So I didn't really wanna put them on my other bookcase where I keep most of my fantasy books. So because I've started over there, I'll talk about Six of Crows which is a fantasy book like I said about a gang of misfits who have to put together a heist to win lots of money and it's just got the best characters it's very much character driven which I love about it I don't find that a lot of fantasy is but that's why I thought it was so good and then on the other side we start with my contemporary books which are mostly by Keris Stainton so we have Jessie Hart's NYC, Emma Hart's LA, Starring Kitty and Spotlight on Sunny. I love Keris his books. I'm such a big fan of them and I have most of her books. If not, I don't think I have all of them, but I'm pretty much there because I love to buy copies of her books. And then right at the bottom, we have two more books by Kara Stainton, Della Says OMG and Counting Stars. Counting Stars is not just my favourite of Kara's books, but one of my favourite books of all time and actually her kind of sequel, more like a prequel in the same style and set in the same place is out next year, My Heart Goes Bang. 
and it's just so so good I got an early preview of it and I just already know it's going to be one of my favorite books of all time and then we go to my Holly Bourne books and we have Am I Normal Yet? How Hard Can Love Be? and I have two copies of What's a Girl Got to Do. I love these books they are again all about feminism I have a lot of feminist books because I love reading about feminism with feminist characters and this is overtly feminist so it's about a group of girls three girls each of them has a book am i normal yet is evie's book as she deals with going back to college after having ocd how hard can love be is about amber who goes to america and what's a girl gotta do is about lottie who has a viral campaign all about feminism and they have a feminist girl group going on and a feminism club and then we have two books by non pratt trouble and truth or dare i love trouble because i love books about teenage pregnancy it's a bit of a guilty pleasure and truth or dare is all about youtube which i really loved reading about and i thought the non wrote it really well and then there is lobsters and freshers by tom ellen and lucy iverson who are two of my favorite authors their books are so funny i couldn't stop laughing when i was reading both of these and i actually did a video about freshers which is all about my bookish memories and then i have unconventional by maggie harcourt which is all about a comic convention. I was gonna say Comic-Con then, but it's not Comic-Con, it's one that is like Comic-Con. And I loved how geeky and fun it was. And then at the top, we have The State of Grace by Rachel Lucas. She is one of my favorite authors, but this is her first YA book. And I love her adult fiction. It's about a girl called Grace as she navigates life, having autism and how she sees the world. And then right at the top, we have Wing Jones by Catherine Weber. It's one of my favorite books of the year about a girl called Wing whose brother has been injured and it's all about her reaching her goals and being really amazing and it's all about girl power and I just found it really empowering. So thank you so much for 15,000 subscribers. I really hope you enjoyed my bookshelf tour and here's to the next 15,000 subscribers. Okay, let's not think about that. that is, it's a little bit scary. But thank you so much for all your support. I am so grateful. I just can't believe it. I need to pinch myself. It's it's scary, 15,000 of you. But I hope that you continue to enjoy my videos. And I just really, really am grateful. Have I said that already? I really am. From the bottom of my heart, I love you. You are my favourites. Thank you for liking, for subscribing, for commenting, just for spreading all the bookish love. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!